there's always a thesis, a thesis that drives a growth story, right? A belief that something was going to happen because of this. Now, in its core, if we think about it, it makes sense. We're going to have an increase in immigration. Hence, we should get higher prices. Is that really true? Is there any analysis of this? Well, what's great about Stats Canada is that you can access the information and find out, is that a fact or is it just another thesis? And what you're going to see is that actually it's a thesis. I mean, <clears throat> I believe this is why we're in, we're in trouble. No one has studied history. And if you want to be a forecaster, the very first thing is that you, you need to study history. And has this happened before? If we do this, this, and this, this will be the outcome. I mean, this historic credit bubble here in Canada should be no surprise. It's very simple. You know, if you look at uh, just one book, Manias, Panics, and Crashes. And by the way, if you're in the investment business, you should have that book, and that should be mandatory so you're not allocating your clients into the wrong assets. But that, you know, that book alone, I mean, the first time I read that a long time ago, and I re read it and update it with the new uh, additions. It's just bringing in, oh, where, where does society go, you know, into the d dumb zone, right? And we saw that last year in uh, renewable energy and um, um, ARC investments where, you know, listen, I, I love these industries, right? This is capital's flown into growth industries, but, you know, they're, they're down 60 to 80%. And for some reason, investors never learn. I don't, I don't understand that part. But anyways, so here's the data. What I what I did was simply looked at the historical data. And there is a lot of data about Canada. In fact, I took every decade up until 2022 and then went backwards, right? And then I said, okay, where did we get the fastest population growth? And, uh, you know, where are the asset prices? Now, I didn't put in the numbers there, and I plan to in the future, but you can see the asset manias uh, that occurred, it, it was at the lower end. And this was a surprise even to myself, right? Um, really, this recent mania from 2000, 2022, came with the 12th and 17th lowest population growth, which is absolutely fascinating. Right. Um, in, in fact, if you looked at demand in the 1930s and in the 1870s, uh, where there was a fast population growth, real estate prices collapsed. They collapsed because of credit bubbles and the banking were were in, impaired. And at the time, it was a railroad mania uh, in the 1870s and um, in the the 1920s it was a combination we had radio and automobile i mean there was just a lot of advan advancement people get caught up in their credit bubble well, today if you look at it it's the immigration thesis they say well it's going to put up pressure on rents yes it will and then it's also going to cause an inflation rise and that inflation will cause interest rates to rise you know and which will cause what more defaults, right? It's, it's just logical, but nobody's thinking this through. To me, it's just common sense, but I, I think there's just a biased view. People want to hear a story that suits their view that real estate is uh, an investment that always goes up. Now, look, uh, let's look at some other data. And actually, this was updated today. Okay, so what's a story? What does this tell you? To simplify the economic long wave, Drayton's long wave cycle began in 1946, peaked in the 70s. Remember, it's a secular long wave, usually almost uh, the length of a lifespan. 55 years is the average. This is one of the longest, but it's created the biggest bubbles in history. So we've been in a down wave. And the down wave, all it means is economic growth is slowing, and so is consumption. Now, look at this chart. The 1970s witnessed rising real interest rates, 
rising real estate prices, but they stayed within the norm. But but yet we had the fastest uh, household credit growth. How is that possible? Rising real incomes. And there was no asset bubble. And you would have expected in the fastest growth rate in a decade, real estate prices would have collapsed. They didn't. They kept on rising because real incomes were rising. Today, the opposite is true. They're the real income, not nominal, real income, which is adjusted for inflation, has been falling and it's been stagnant in real terms since uh, the early 80s, 1980s. So um, any rise in interest rates is going to slow demand because what people have done is levered and most people make choices based on their cash flow, not how big is the mortgage? I mean, you know, my father, I remember he bought his second home in the early 80s and he had a $35,000 mortgage and he couldn't sleep. <laughs> Most people would, would laugh at that today and they, they have no problem taking a half a million dollar mortgage and think it's nothing because they look at the cash flow and the interest rates and they say, well, I can carry that, no problem. They don't look at the size. Well, there's the problem, right? We had this monetary wave. And for new people, the monetary wave is when the price of credit is falling, driving up, and the deregulation of the financial industry, which causes Ponzi finance, which in the end causes economic winter, right? There's nothing new here. We just forgot the lessons of the past. But if you look at it again, what's interesting is, you know, there's low, anybody who looks at a technical analysis chart. They see this, right? Lower highs. And every dec a decade or so, we're seeing a slow rate of growth. Now, what's interesting, we only had 7.7% year-over-year growth in um, uh, total household cr uh, credit, even though that came off the the 5,000-year low in interest rates. And here are the latest numbers this morning for June, and we're down to 3.5%. This is even lower than it was during the collapse of real estate in the 1990s. So it just tells you that where this trend line is going, that Canadians will be deleveraging uh, during economic winter at the latest to 2030s. I believe it's probably going to start next year. So it's 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 really, and real estate prices, think of it, it's based on affordability. Immigrants don't have the income. It takes five years for them to catch up with the norm. They don't have the savings. The, you know, they usually the majority coming here with not much. Stats Canada, the Bank of Canada have confirmed that. You can do a search and, and confirm that uh, factual data. But again, the thing is that there is an obvious credit cycle, and the long wave is that, right? We have these business cycles, the accumulation of debt, and then eventually, because it's unproductive, it's not creating wealth. It's creating an industry. Creating wealth. The only place you get the creation of wealth is from technology. And that uh, technology increases productivity, which creates real wealth. And then that wealth is passed on to um, the income earner and the business. Then it's taxed. The government, remember, the government doesn't have money. It's taxed and to build social programs and infrastructure and everything else. But if you're not creating wealth, you won't have the economic growth to sustain all this debt. And this is what causes economic winter. Take a look at the mortgage data, and it's the same thing. I mean, look look at its trend. The you know, all I did was draw a trend line. Well, it's automatically done, right? You just plot anything and then the uh, software is going to automatically plot it. I also did I plotted an exponential trend line on the total amount of debt. And notice that it was already slown in 2018. Now, that's important because we no longer live in a capitalist world of savings and investment. The And I love the, the best definition of the economic system we have. It's a Keynesian, hybrid, socialist, capitalist called creditism. It's based on consumption and the ever-increasing amount of debt. And once that exponential growth in debt no longer grows, that's it. Then the system collapses. And that's what we're headed into. And as a lot of people know, the, the whole reason for launching this is to help people get through economic winter, which I believe should last to 2040. Volatile markets, creative destruction, political upheaval, wars, civil unrest, 
great innovations. You know, we just upend everything because the old system no longer works. And we're going to watch politicians promise that we can keep the the old system. Doesn't work. We 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 can't afford the healthcare, sick care system, education system, the monetary system, uh, the pension system. I mean, all these have to be reformed. So, but that's another video in the future. So if there's anything that isn't clear, you know, as I always say, just ask me and, uh, you know, I answer. A lot of people are putting questions as this channel grows and appreciate the follows. But but again, the the opportunity and the reason why I started this was the, the shocking mistakes society is making. I mean, politics has become so corrupted. It's just a thesis what they think they think is how things should work. Look, the economic long way, which I discovered on my own, the serendipitous uh, discovery, I, I was looking for a market timing model, but I discovered it and, or realized that it's a social cycle, right? It's reflective of human nature because we act differently in each part of the season, right? Uh, this is still an economic fall. So the monetary grains uh, speculation, rent-seeking, asset price inflation is still part of it. Once that collapses and the social mood with it, then it changes and we'll go into a social conservatism. And people at this point will be never looking at real estate as an investment again, but that's in the future. But it's 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 fa it's a fascinating cycle. And, and what attracts me to it is it's it's an inner view of, of, of society and our evolutionary tendencies, right? Because Kondratiev and Schumpeter really knows. Well, let me backtrack. Kondratiev was shot and killed for dare suggesting that capitalism was going to collapse in the 30s, but then it was going to come back stronger than ever. And, th and that it did. And of course, Stalin didn't like that. Saw that a threat to the communist thesis, right? And we know what collapsed, which which was communism. So, and, and capitalism is always a solution because it, it is a, a part of creative destruction. When something doesn't work, it switches. It's the technology. What's thwarting the progression or slowing the progression to decentralization is governments. Uh, they're just trying to hang on to power. The only way we can grow in the future is to decentralize, produce, manufacture goods and services and energy at source. That's where the productivity is going to be. That's where the technology is leading us to. And the old paradigm is not uh, sustainable. Anyways, uh, I try not to ramble, but the, the key thing is what I'm trying to get is that most important thing is like, you know, this immigration thesis is just falling flat on its head. We had major booms before, and and real estate prices collapsed. So, but think of it, think of it, with with the current rise in interest rates, every single day, another person is feeling, or family is feeling, or thousands of family are feeling a strain of uh, much higher rates, and they haven't stopped rising, and they probably won't. Into until next year. So, well, that thesis is probably a thesis put up by the bulls in the real estate market. Once that collapses, then that will kill the final confidence in the real estate market, right? And let's be honest here: real estate prices have to collapse. They're ba they're based on a on a on a weak foundation, right? It's like a bodybuilder on steroids. That is not true of he or she. Once they withdraw from it, it collapses or they deflate. 20 to 30 percent or more. Canada, especially Toronto and, and Vancouver, are just in la la land and they're so off the what they should be in terms of historical inflation and incomes. They need to collapse so the, the people who do come to this country and the younger generation can enter and purchase a home. They can't today. So if, if it doesn't collapse, they'll start to leave and immigration will then reverse. Uh, there is no benefit to, unless you came from abject poverty, to come to Canada. This is not the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, 80s in Canada, or even 90s, you know, up until that. Um, ever since 2000, it's becoming harder and harder because of stagnant real wages and asset 
price uh, uh, in real estate that is just making it almost impossible. Now it is almost impossible unless you're wealthy to purchase a home. And that's not sustainable. The cure for high prices is always high prices, right? It changes uh, production or it will change something within the system. And we don't have adults managing the economy. We, we have these theories. Thankfully, theories do collapse if they're not based on a, a foundation, right? So it's, it's uh, I don't know who said this, but it calls the current economy an empire of lies. And when it collapses, a lot of financial ruin will be amongst us. And I will say that one thing is certain, right? We, we, the, the demographics don't bottom for real estate until the 2030s. And we're going to see a banking crisis and at least one uh, major Canadian bank fail. That's, that's, that's inevitable. So be prepared for it. Anyways, a uh, lot to come. I'm going to continue to do these. Try to keep them as short as possible, to the point, informative, factual, historical, educational, so that you can uh, benefit from this, right? I'll be hopefully wanting to shift away from real estate, but I think real estate is a big story for the next three years as it collapses. But I'll get into, you know, what is the decentralized renaissance? What are we coming out of? What, sorry, what are we going to grow into? You know, where is the political cycle taking us? Where is the demographic cycle taking us? Where is the um, technology cycle? You know, th these are non unstoppable forces. And we have vested interest or uh, particular people trying to put a break on uh, that. And that will only cause a further civil unrest. We're seeing the political upheaval. We're seeing this in, around the world where certain parties are trying to prevent other parties to rise to power. You know, it doesn't work. If the people aren't happy, they're going to revolt. I, I never understand politics where you think you can force an agenda. If you want to see your economy boom, let it be free. Let it innovate. Let us make the mistakes. Let us fail. You know, this, this is how we have progress. We're we're reversing all the gains from the Renaissance and the information revolution uh, after the advent of the printing press. But I guess this is our time to learn, and we're going to see a lot of hardship. So we don't have to be a part of it. And that's the reason for this, is to focus on those who want to move society forward, be informed what to avoid, and where are the opportunities. Hopefully that makes sense. As always, we'll talk soon.